Amyloblastoma by Autumn Chapman, Katie Griffith, Kylie Graney, Tracy Pites, and Devin Prodell. The definition or background is it's an epithelial odontogenic tumor. It's benign but behaves aggressively. The potential origins are the enamel organ, odontogenic rest, reduced enamel epithelium, epithelial lining of odontogenic cysts. It's slow growing and it accounts for 11 to 13% of all odontogenic tumors. The clinical findings has a broad age distribution with a mean age about 40, no gender predilection, and 80% are found in the mandible and 20% in the maxilla. The most common site is the mandibular molar ramus area. Discovery is usually incidental or due to asymptomatic jaw expansion, tooth movement, or malocclusion. There are oncogene mutations often found in the maxillary SMO or mandibular BRAF tumors. Radiographically, it's usually well-defined and corticated has a soap bubble or honeycomb pattern. You can find buccal and lingual cortical expansion and it's found in tooth bearing areas of the jaw. Root displacement and possible resorption can be seen. The biological subtypes, a solid or multicystic amyloblastoma, a cystic or unicystic amyloblastoma, desmoplastic amyloblastoma, or peripheral amyloblastoma. A malignant amyloblastoma is an amyloblastoma that is found uh, at a location other than in the jaw. And the uh, amyloblastic carcinoma is an amyloblastoma that shows cancerous changes. The solid or multicystic amyloblastoma. It originates exclusively from the breasts of the dental lamina and its histological subtypes are follicular, plexiform, acanthomatosis, basal cell, granular, and desmoplastic. Unicystic amyloblastoma. It looks like an odontogenic cyst clinically and radiographically. It accounts for 5 to 15% of all amyloblastomas. The three possible origins are the reduced enamel epithelium, dentigerous cyst, or cystic degeneration of a solid amyloblastoma. It's predominantly unilocular. The desmoplastic amyloblastoma has an unusual histomorphology with extensive desmoplasia and stromal collagenization. It's a mixed radiolucent radiopaque lesion with diffuse borders. It's the most aggressive type and it has a 15.9% recurrence rate. Peripheral amyloblastoma is an exophytic growth confined to the gingiva or alveolar mucosa. It's extra osseous and it shows continuity with the oral mucosal stratified squamous epithelium. It originates from the glands of serrae, dental lamina, pluripotent cells from minor salivary glands, and basal cells of the mucosal epithelium. Uh, it's most commonly found in the mandibular premolar area and acanthomatosis is the most common histological type. The differential interpretation. The first one is calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. Clinically, it's very similar to amyloblastoma, but it's very rare. It's only 1% of all odontogenic tumors. Radiographically, they can be completely radiolucent, but often have opaque foci that resemble a snow flurry. Histologically, these are very unique and have no resemblance to amyloblastoma. Odontogenic myxoma. Clinically, the mean age is 30 for odontogenic myxoma, which is younger than amyloblastoma, and they have an equal frequency in both the maxilla and mandible. Radiographically, they're always lucent, well circumscribed, or diffused with a soap bubble appearance, very similar to amyloblastoma. Cortical expansion and root displacement may be seen, but are typically not as expansive as in amyloblastoma. A dentigerous cyst. Dentigerous cysts are always seen with an impacted tooth and radiographically, they are well-defined unilocular radiolucencies with corticated margins. Odontogenic keratocysts. OKCs are usually well-defined, smooth, with corticated borders, and can be uni- or multilocular. They sometimes show root resorption and cortical expansion, but these are rare. For younger adults, the differential interpretation can be a central giant cell granuloma, clinically more common in females and under the age of 30. Radiographically, it's non-corticated, multilobular, or uncommonly unilocular, but both radiolucent. It's well-defined with a scallop border and usually more localized than an amyloblastoma. An ossifying fibroma. Radiographically, this can be either lucent or slightly opaque, and when it's excised, it'll come out easily as one mass. Essential hemangioma. Clinically, these are more common in the second decade of life in females, and bruits may be detected. Radiographically, they appear as multilocular radiolucencies with a soap bubble appearance similar to amyloblastoma. A needle aspiration can be done to differentiate it from amyloblastoma. Idiopathic histiocytosis. 
Radiographically, bone lesions show sharp, circumscribed, punched out appearance in the central aspect of the mandible and maxilla and are located in the periapical sites most often. They can be in any bone in the body and appear as non-corticated radiolucencies or floating teeth. Treatment options are dependent upon the characteristics and location of the lesion. For solid and multicystic, surgical excision or radical therapy are preferred. Unicystic curatage is an option. Malignancies are treated as carcinomas. Maxillary ameloblastomas prove more difficult to treat, and there's no effective treatment for those that have expanded into surrounding areas. All excisions are recommended to include a one to one and a half centimeter bone margin. Experimental or progressive treatment includes radiotherapy or targeted gene therapy. Here are our references and our image citations. Thank you.